Hi, this is Dan with QT Equipment. Today we're going to take a look at the IMT CAS80 RL CW. Did I get that right? Hopefully, yes. This is IMT's largest air compressor and one of the more popular large air compressors we use on our custom service trucks. Today we're going to talk about safety, specs, operation, maintenance installation considerations, and the business case for this air compressor. This is a, an expensive air compressor to purchase. It's also an expensive air compressor to maintain. So you wanna make sure that you're making a good business decision when you put this air compressor on your truck. Let me cut in here because as I watched the first draft of this video, I realized that I made a glaring omission. I totally glossed over something very important about this compressor and I need to cut it in even if it's not to our video guys uh, satisfaction the information is very important and the thing that I glossed over was that this compressor makes a lot of air a lot of air 80 CFM is hard to kind of wrap your brain around but let me give you a couple of facts we've never had a customer call us and say that this compressor was too slow, that they had to wait on air, that they couldn't get their jobs done fast enough because this compressor couldn't keep up. If you're in a high production environment, you've got big air tools and you need to make sure that you're not sitting around waiting for a piston compressor to come up to pressure, this is a great option for you. There are trade-offs with this. We're gonna discuss those in detail with the rest of the video, but I didn't wanna post this and and just know that I left the most important piece about this compressor and that it makes a lot of air. Did I tell you, it makes a lot of air. Back to the video. Let's start off with safety. Every one of our customers is very safety focused and we're gonna take a few seconds here just to highlight a few safety considerations. There's three or four pages in the manual. They're gonna tell you 15 different ways to kill or maim yourself. It's written by the attorneys so that if they get hauled into court, they can point to the manual, but we want you to be safe, litigation or not, okay? There's a couple of safety considerations I really want you to pay attention to if you're working inside this compressor. Number one is when this thing runs, it gets hot. So make sure you let it cool down before you get in there and burn yourself. And the second thing is, this is an air compressor. By definition, it compresses air. It's gonna compress air to 150 PSI. If you're working on this system, make sure you relieve all the pressure before you work on it so you don't hurt yourself. What do these letters and numbers mean here? CAS, compressed air system. All of IMT's air compressors start with CAS, and I'm pretty sure that it means compressed air system. 80 stands for 80 CFM. That is the max CFM, which is the cubic feet per minute, which is the volume of air that this compressor will make. 80 CFM is your max CFM coming out of this compressor. The CFM is going to vary based on the GPM, which is the gallons per minute, out of your hydraulic system. If you give this compressor its full gallons per minute, 20 gallons per minute is gonna give you 80 CFM. If you give it, let's say 14 gallons a minute, you may only get 60 CFM. So it's gonna vary based on the gallons per minute that you give this compressor. Next couple letters are rotary. This is a rotary screw compressor. Unlike a piston compressor that makes air by pushing the pistons up and down, this compressor makes air with two screws that are interlocked and they're pushing air through a bath of oil. The nice thing about a rotary screw is that it's a 100% duty cycle. We'll talk more about that in a few seconds. L is for lightweight. They put this thing on a diet a few years ago and they got it down to 285 pounds. So that's what the L's for. And then the CW stands for cold weather. There's two versions of this compressor, the regular one and then the cold weather version. The cold weather version has a couple of extra items to make it better suited for cold environments. Next up, operation. These things are very simple to operate. 
we're not gonna run this compressor because I stole this out of assembly and it has not been green tagged by anybody in quality yet. And uh, I just don't wanna mess anything up for this customer for this video. You can go back to the BA440 video and see a compressor operate. It's gonna operate the same exact way from the handset. The most important thing I wanna talk about in operation is that these rotary screw compressors are 100% duty cycle and they need to be run hard. When I was doing my research on this, I talked to one of our field techs, I said, what, do you, what can you tell me about those 80 CFM compressors? He said that 90% of the problems that he sees out in the field with these compressors is that technicians are not running them hard enough. If we go back to a piston compressor, that's a 50% duty cycle compressor, which means you're going to want to use a compressor for five or 10 minutes and then let it rest for five or 10 minutes, on and off. That's a good cycle for a piston compressor. If you've got a piston compressor and it's sitting on your truck and it doesn't do anything for three months, I would put money on you being able to fire that compressor up without a problem and make air and do your job. Where you run into problems with a piston compressor is when you exceed the duty cycle. If you wanna run that thing for 30 minutes straight, you're gonna burn it up and you're gonna have problems. The rotary screw is the exact opposite. You want to run this compressor for a long time on a regular basis to get the moisture out. Today's a perfect day to talk about this compressor because you look at it. When we started this video, we were at 70% humidity. We're at the 60s now. When you start this compressor, it's pulling moisture into your system. And if it does not get hot enough, that moisture gets trapped in there and causes a lot of problems. If you go through the manual, the recommendation for this compressor is that it's run at least monthly. And the way the manual wants you to do it, and this makes sense, is that you're going to start your air compressor, you're gonna keep your air drain valve closed, so it's only gonna build up to 150 PSI, and then you're just gonna let it run and come up to temperature. And average operating temperature is somewhere around 180 degrees on these. You're gonna let this compressor come up to temperature and then you're gonna open your air drain valve and you're gonna let that compressor run for, I think the manual says about 20 minutes. The thinking on that is, when your air drain valve is closed, you're not bringing any new air into the system. You're not bringing this 60% humidity air into your system when your air drain valve is closed. So you let your compressor come up to temperature, you open up that air drain valve, now you're moving air through the system, your system is hot, and that moisture is getting burned off. Why is moisture bad inside this air compressor? Well, Moisture can do a couple of damaging things if you're using this air compressor intermittently, letting moisture build up inside the system. It can freeze if you're in a cold climate, and that can cause the pressure valves to misread the pressure inside the system and your compressor won't work. The moisture can get emulsified into the oil. That's a word I've never said on camera before but the water and the oil get emulsified and it starts to look like Pepto-Bismol and it clogs the system up. You can get rust inside your system and your coalescer filter, which is the filter that separates the oil and the air through the screws, that can get plugged up and cause a lot of problems. So please, if you learn nothing else from this, this video, if you own this rotary screw compressor or, or any other rotary screw compressor, Make sure that on a regular basis, and that could be, if you talk to our service techs, they say daily. If you read the manual, it says monthly. If you talk to IMT, they say weekly. So I don't really have a good time frame to give you. The wrong time frame is never. You're gonna wanna run this compressor, let's say weekly, get it hot, get the moisture out of the system, and this thing will run for a long time. Last video, our video guy complained about how much time you had to spend on a ladder. So our parts team was nice enough to get this compressor out so that our video guy can stand on the ground where he's safe and comfortable, make his video magic. So yeah, we got a compressor here. Uh, we're gonna unwrap this thing, show you what's inside of it, and talk about maintenance.
maintenance. First of all, this is your manual. Manual comes on a thumb drive. It is 96 pages and a lot of good useful information on this. Very few people will actually read this manual, but you should, you'll learn a lot. The maintenance interval in the manual for this compressor is that at 50 hours, you're supposed to change the oil and filters. And then every 500 hours, you're supposed to change your oil and filters. I asked IMT why the 50 hour maintenance? And this made sense. They said sometimes if you've got a compressor that's sitting around for a long time, the oil and filters can get a little stale and that's why they want you to change it at 50 hours. Almost nobody does that, but it's in the manual. I wanted to point it out. So if you're buying a compressor that has been sitting on the shelf for five years, you probably want to change the oil and filters. If you look at the build date on this and it's pretty recent, you're probably in good shape. The next service interval is 500 hours. On your 500 hour maintenance, which is your regular maintenance, you're going to change the oil inside the compressor you're going to change this air filter. There's an oil filter and there's a coalescer. This coalescer filter is what separates the oil and the air. When the air gets pushed through the screws inside the rotary screw compressor, it's going to contain a little bit of oil and that oil is removed by this coalescer filter. The service interval again is 500 hours or annually. If you use the compressor a lot, you may rack up more than 500 hours a year and you want to do it per the hour interval. If you don't use this compressor quite enough, uh, you're going to want to change this at least yearly. Maintenance cost for this kit in 2024, so prices always change and they usually go up, maintenance cost for this service kit is about $800. It's pretty expensive compared to the maintenance cost on say a BA440, which I think is less than 200. We're going to talk about that more in the business side of this video, but make sure that when you purchase this compressor, you are understanding what the annual maintenance costs are going to be. For your fastest service and to make sure you get your parts right the first time, make sure that you give our parts team your model and serial number. It's located on this tag right here next to the gauges. Let's talk about what makes the cold weather package the cold weather package. Price upgrade for the cold weather package is about $400. Again, that's in 2024 dollars and that can change over time. You're going to get a few things for that that's going to help your compressor operate better in a cold environment. The first thing you're going to get is this thermal valve. Back here is a hydraulic oil cooler. When you have the cold weather package, you're going to initiate your PTO. It's going to create flow through your system. It's going to come up through your compressor and then when this thermal valve reads a temperature lower than 100 degrees, it's going to send your oil right back to tank and let it come up to temperature. Once this thermal valve reads that your oil temperature is above 100 degrees, it's going to send the oil through the hydraulic cooler and the fan and it's going to keep your oil at a comfortable temperature. The second thing you're going to get on the cold weather package, and it may be a little hard to see in the video, but you're going to get a heat wrap around this pressure sensor. This pressure sensor senses whether there's pressure inside your system. If this gets iced up, it's going to read a false signal and your compressor won't start. There's a switch inside the dash that's going to say comp heat, uh, old tags that we had said AC heat and that got confusing because people thought it was air conditioning but it was air compressor and if you flip that switch on it's going to heat up this blanket around this switch and make sure that it doesn't freeze up. Let's talk installation. This is the most common 
replacement for this air compressor right above what we would call LV1, which is the first vertical compartment on your body. This particular compressor is up on risers, but you can mount it directly to the top of the side pack as well, that's fine. This compressor is 285 pounds and this side pack will handle it just fine. Installation wiring. We could really go down a rabbit hole here, but most of the time these are gonna get mounted on an IMT body with an IMT Series 4 wiring harness. They make it easy. It's pretty much plug and play, even though those words can make me nervous sometimes. You really just plug it all together and then you're gonna be able to control your compressor from either your panel in the back or your remote. When you're thinking about placement, we've had customers before ask us to install these compressors inside enclosed containers. For example, like a lube truck. The problem with that is you may not be getting enough ventilation through your air compressor for everything to work properly. Be careful if you're going to install that inside of a compartment. Inside top of the side pack is, is a perfect place for it. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got six inches behind the compressor. If you see all this space up here and you wanna mount a top box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have at least six inches behind here that makes sure that the air that's coming through this compressor can get out. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got six inches on both sides. This is the inlet for air being drawn in that gets compressed, so you don't wanna choke that off. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can get to everything for your maintenance and your service. And then on the front, this bump out, they're gonna recommend between eight and 10 inches of free space. Next consideration is hydraulics. Most of the time, you're gonna get your hydraulics from a PTO and pump setup on your truck. That setup is gonna to need to produce somewhere between 12 and 20 gallons per minute. There's a chart in the manual if you wanna get super specific on it. The more gallons per minute you give the hydraulic motor inside here, the more air you're gonna get out an air defined as CFM, cubic feet per minute, the volume of air, the PSI maxes out at 150. You're not gonna get more pressure of air, but the more hydraulic flow you give this compressor, the more volume of air that you'll get out of it. Because again, the hydraulic motor spins faster, which spins the screws faster, which gives you more volume of air. The other considerations for hydraulic installation is your oil tank. Typical rule of thumb for an oil tank is two times your gallons per minute. So if you're giving this compressor 18 gallons a minute, you're gonna need at least a 36 gallon oil tank. This system here has a 40 gallon oil tank. And then you're gonna need a return filter. We put pressure filters in off of the pump. So we're gonna give a 20 micron filtration off the pump and a 25 micron filtration at the tank. Let's talk about the business side of this air compressor. This air compressor is $20, $24. Prices can change. They usually go up. This air compressor is about $12,000 plus install because you're going to need PTO pump, hydraulic system, everything else. Compressor itself, 12 grand. Upgrade to the cold weather package is about 400 bucks. Maintenance cost on this air compressor, and again, your maintenance is gonna to need to be done at least annually, but if you use this air compressor a lot, which you should, every 500 hours is about $800. When you're specking out a truck, let's say this crane, this, this crane is a 12,000 pound crane. If this crane is on this truck, for five years and never gets to go to max load, the crane doesn't care, the crane is fine. This air compressor on the other hand, it's a different animal. If this compressor doesn't get run hard, you will have problems with it. If you're gonna need this air compressor to produce air with a one inch gun or something else that's high volume of air, and you're gonna need that on a regular basis, and you don't wanna wait for air, 
A piston compressor, you're gonna need to wait for it to build air, and then you're gonna have to abide by that 50% duty cycle. This rotary screw is a 100% duty cycle. You can grab your one inch gun, you can run that thing for three hours straight. Your compressor doesn't care. Long story short, take a look at what you're gonna be using this air compressor for, how much it's gonna get used in the field. If you're gonna use it a lot, absolutely, it's definitely worth the money. If you're going to use it intermittently, I would take a pause and really decide where your money is best spent. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot about the IMT CAS 80 compressor today. I know I learned a lot making this video. I know you guys love the big truck walk arounds and we haven't done one of those in a while. Good news is that we've got a couple custom trucks on deck for early 2024. Customers have specifically requested that we do videos on these trucks and we're going to comply with those requests. We try to comply with all the customer requests that we can. We can't say yes to everything, but if you want a custom video made about your custom truck, we're happy to do it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, get an alert for when those videos pop up. If you want to find out what we're building on a regular basis, we're doing better on our social media this year. You can find us on Instagram at QT Equipment, Facebook QT Equipment, always our website, qtequipment.com. Work dirty, be happy. Until next time.